Please do not fall victim to the scammers in the comments section or on other social media platforms. I will never reach out to you for a personal reading. To reach me directly for a personal reading or for a collaboration, you can email me at CelticFairyTarot90 at gmail.com. Hello everyone, Celtic Fairy Tarot back with another pick a card reading. And today we are going to be talking about rainy days and how we could be taking advantage of them in our life. You know, setting intentions are so powerfully reconstructive for the psyche and can be very beneficial to manifesting what it is you really want in your life. If you clicked on this video, you may be someone who struggles with rainy days, with anxiety, maybe depression, or maybe rainy days are just calling you to step out of the matrix for a moment. We will find out in one of these three piles. We have pile one with this castle, We have pile two with this book. And we have pile three with this hourglass. Take your time, vibe out which pile is calling to you and the timestamps are down below. Can't wait to get into it. Hello, pile one. You have chosen the castle and the evolve card. And the evolve card here, it talks about reintroducing yourself to you. When I tune into, you know, your ideal energy on a rainy day, I see indoor forts made of sheets and blankets. I see reading books, watching fantasy movies. It's really like the energy of escape and evolve. It's like I'm sitting in the living room and then all of a sudden I'm transported to a fantasy world of some kind. This doesn't feel like the typical unhealthy escapism. However, it feels like art, creativity, a day with the Fae, right? Like a day with your imaginary friends. It feels like allowing the inner child to come out and feel safe, but also having you evolve in the process. You know, a lot of life lessons that I learned in childhood didn't come from my family or the people around me. They came from books and fantasy movies and things like that. Yeah, it, it really just feels like allowing the inner child to navigate or um, see reality through their eyes in order to evolve. The overall energy is kind of like bonding, right? Like when you were a child, there was a very specific way that you viewed the world. You probably read books all the time like me, um, crave that fantasy and adventure like me. And I really feel that here. I feel like you learn quite a bit and you intake quite a bit through mythology, through stories, through playing pretend and things like that. You like to really experience things. Like I bet um, certain places like... Um, how do I explain it? Like, like out of time places. Like I was watching this documentary on what life would have been like in, you know, the 1800s in like England, I think it was. Um, and it was like a place you could go where they still give you that experience. And I feel like you are someone who would love that. Um, but you can do that using books, using fantasy um, on a rainy day inside. You know, light those candles, create the ambiance, and read that book. Things like that. Okay? Yeah, like your intention can look like, I set this intention to find adventure with my inner child today. And even if you have to work that day, or even if you have to be somewhere that day, trying to find the adventure in where you are. Um, how is your inner child viewing where you are? Different things like that, okay? All right, we are going to get deeper into this. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm looking at this card and I'm seeing this girl and she's dressed up. It's like someone cosplaying with their cat, right? <laughs> is what this looks like. Like um, having the cat dress up as well. Like it just feels like entering that, you know, imaginary state of mind and, and really using that to your advantage uh, during the rainy days. All right, spirit team of pile one. How can pile one be using the rainy days? What intentions should they be setting?
we have justice. What intentions should Pile 1 be setting on those rainy days, please? Thank you. Okay, we have the Ten of Pentacles. Yeah, like even just writing stories or like what would your life look like if you could envision it? If you could control every aspect of how you lived, what would your life look like? Embody that. Play pretend. Pile one is really what this is. That's so helpful for not only reconstructing your psyche and the subconscious, but it's also helpful in manifesting. We have the Queen of Swords. We have the Four of Cups. And we have the Death card. Back of the deck energy is Judgment. Yeah, like what would you create? in your life or what would your life look like if you had control over it what time era would you be in um how would you dress how would you speak how would you talk um things like that i really feel like um on rainy days you can get stuck in this um energy of what if or um being plagued by the things that have happened in the past it's almost like the rain is calling you to build a different future or to build a bridge to break you free from this oppressive emotional energy every time you know water comes from the sky the queen of swords is a thought leader she is a thought leader and i feel that here it's kind of like the energy of allowing the inner child to change the narrative it's like the ego and the subconscious on a rainy day are so plagued and full of heavy emotions and your inner child wants to come in and kind of dismantle that for you or kind of break through that and remind you that every day even you know the gray ones can still be a magical adventure that's what this feels like leaving behind the idea that you know um how do i explain this leaving behind the idea that the sky is gray so we are gray that's typically what i'm feeling like like on a typical rainy day you would be like oh there's no color in the sky it looks miserable i feel miserable that's the energy here and i'm noting like the background here and how all of these colors are kind of coming out of these two's energy and i feel that i feel like your inner child is wanting to break through on these rainy days and say we can still have adventure today in fact we can have more adventure than any other day okay there's a lot of um energy a lot of power coming down when it rains and taking advantage of that um to to have your inner child come to the forefront and experience life in a way that feels safe in order for you to learn i don't know if i'm bringing this through correctly i'm really trying my best job um yeah but it's like taking the narrative um of oppressed and depressed and changing that narrative to if i can envision it i can be it if i can envision it i can do it it may take me a little bit of time it may take me you know envisioning it a million times but eventually i can attain the life of my dreams and how i choose to live Yeah, you are in the captain's seat, pile one. <laughs> There's transformation waiting for you. Um, where you used to look is what I'm hearing. Like, you used to be someone who read books all the time. You used to be someone who watched fantasy movies all the time and really tried to embody that energy. And now I think life has really gotten in the way. And there's so much external stress and external energy that it's been really difficult for you to find that part of yourself again but if you notice every time you read a book there's a whole new inspiration it's like your spark has been relit okay definitely be looking to the fantasy realm when it rains okay pile one 
All right, I'm going to leave that here. I wish you the best of luck on your journey, and until next time, bye. Hello, Pile 2. You have chosen the open book and the nature card. And the nature card talks about feeling nature's heartbeat um, and tuning into the ebb and flow of Mother Nature's energy. It talks about synchronizing yourself with Mother Nature's rhythms. Uh, you're likely feeling very called outside or by the window when it rains or like the smell of freshly rained grass. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it other than that. The intention you should be setting pile to is to connect back to source and see yourself for the human that you are rather than the role those in your life or job need you to play. Like set the intention to ground with nature when it is raining. Yeah, like I set the intention to ground with nature today. We as humans are so essential to nature, but in a society that very much separates us from nature and can even hurt nature, it's hard to remember that. Every generation becomes more and more separated um, with nature if bloodlines don't hold tightly to it. And so many humans hate camping and therefore don't get nearly as much nature in their life as they should. I personally know people who have never a day in their life walked barefoot outside. Yeah, the rain is calling you to connect pile two. And I'm not saying that you like you personally in here have never walked barefoot outside but there could be a lack of that connection there could be a lot of in your mind and less of in your body and on the rainy days you're being called to be back in your body um, and out of the mind you know please don't put yourself in danger being outdoors like don't be out there when it's thundering and lightning um but really focusing your intent on remembering your connection to mother earth okay let's see if we can get more information here All right, spirit team of pile two, please tell me what should pile two's intentions be when it rains, please? What should they be setting their intentions for? <laughs> wow, we have the high priestess. We have the sun. And one more, please. Thank you. And we have the Six of Cups. Yeah. Beautiful energy. And the Ten of Pentacles. It's It just feels like there's a need to remember your place in this world. Because when it comes to the rain, you could get quite a bit of anxiety. Or you could get quite a bit of, you know kind of like pile one um but if you weren't drawn to pile one that's not a message to watch it um but kind of like pile one you could really struggle with feeling gray or feeling down on the rainy days because of the lack of color uh, because of the lack of being in nature and being outside and on those days you're really being called to be in your body and remember and tune in to that connection in nature this could be working with the fae that day this could be talking to the trees out the window. This could be listening to the rain come down out the window and remembering your place in this world, in, you know, intertwined with nature. In a world where everyone is so profoundly focused on what their life purpose is or the, the meaning of humanity or why we are alive, there are so many smaller um, everyday purposes for the human being, um, not even attached to how you impact the world on an emotional way um, or in an emotional way, but how you affect the world physically, right? Like our breath um, feeds the trees and the trees breath feeds us. And, you know, we are 
protectors, um, helpers for animals, just as animals are protectors and helpers for us. Um, we don't always have that deep connection, especially nowadays in society. So please do not go out and try to hug wild animals. I do not recommend that. Um, but you know, the way we impact animals physically, uh, the way imp animals can impact us physically, like you hear stories all the time. I remember hearing this one story of a woman who was pregnant and she got lost walking back from her car in the snow that got stuck and um, a pack of wolves helped her deliver her baby and keep her warm until help came for her. And I've seen so many videos. One of my favorite things to do when I'm feeling low is watching videos of humans saving animals. Um, you know, whether it's a deer with its head stuck in a fence or whether it's a bear with, um, you know, a stick lodged in its throat, whatever it is, humans really try to come through and help these animals. And I think that what you're being called to remember is your existence on this planet isn't determined by the mind right? The purpose, we could have so many different purposes this lifetime, and some of our purposes we can create ourselves. But the main purpose, um, you know, the biological, physical purpose is that we are very much connected to nature. We are as connected to nature as the bears, as the trees, as the plants, but we don't always remember that, and especially in a society that aims to separate us from that, right? How many people do you know that love camping? Probably not as many as you would think, right? How many people are terrified of the idea of an ant climbing on their shoe? <laughs> Things like that. Um, really getting back in touch with Source and Source being Mother Earth with the Six of Cups energy. Yeah, it's, it's just like normally when I channel, right? There's so much profound information coming through. And in this reading for you, Pile 2, it's very calm and very tranquil. And your spirit team isn't really speaking. They're more so just like showing me images of, you know, roots growing from your feet and, and like connecting to the earth and, you know, putting your forehead on your cat's forehead and bonding with their energy and things like that. And, you know, there's just so much profound physical purpose for humans being here on this planet. And, you know, there's definitely an emotional and mental purpose that humans can achieve. However, I think that the most important to remember is the physical intertwinement that you have with nature, especially on the days that rain, because I feel like that smell of the rain, the feel of the rain is really calling you. Yeah, you could be stuck quite a bit piled to in your own mind. And what your spirit team is saying with this 10 of pentacles is um, connect with nature, ground with nature, allow the energy to flow through you and all of this stagnant energy to become unblocked. And there's nothing that you can't bring in for yourself in this, in this world, in this universe. I'm just embracing <laughs> this energy. It's very calm, very tw tranquil. Like, I, what am I wanting to say instead of tranquil? Okay, <laughs> interesting. I, I'm wanting to say twinkle, right? Like, so I'm thinking of a star and your, your ancestors specifically just showed me a star. And they said to me, a star shines on whether the mind believes it or not, right? A star shines on whether the mind believes it or not. Um, and I think that what's important to remember is that the mind doesn't dictate your full life. And if it does, you are probably very anxious. You are probably very overwhelmed. You are probably very overstimulated. And on the days that it rains, drop down into that heart space, pile two, and embody that, that the energy of nature, the energy of Mother Earth, the, the energy of unconditional love for self. Focus on looking at your skin, getting in touch with your physical body and grounding, okay? All right, pile two, I'm going to leave that here. I wish you the best of luck on your journey and until next time.
Bye. Hello, pile three. You have chosen the hourglass and the centered card. And the centered card talks about using the moon phases with intention. And we're going to replace using the moon phases with using the rain with intention to heal specifically. You know, the rain symbolizes a pause or introspection and cleansing among other things and doing things like dancing in the rain. Um, please be safe while dancing in the rain. Do not dance in the lightning, please. <laughs> Uh, but doing things like dancing in the rain, collecting rainwater for healing spells, and envisioning the rainwater helping you to cleanse your energy and cleanse the energy of your home space is really going to be helpful for you moving forward on your healing journey. Let's see if we can get more information. Yeah, I just heard your ancestors say, and you don't even have to forage to get it, or you don't even have to go to a meta metaphysical store to get it. Yeah, I highly suggest um, collecting rainwater for um, spells and rituals, if that is your thing. If you clicked on this pile, it likely is, with um, the moon phases coming up as well. But putting a jar outside, collecting that rainwater, and using it for rituals in your cauldron and things like that are going to be really helpful and beneficial for you, especially doing those rituals on the same day you are collecting that rainwater okay all right spirit team of pile three what intentions can pile three be setting um on these rainy days please Okay, we have the Queen of Pentacles, and I'm really noticing this um, pentacle right by her sacral chakra. And so, yeah, I feel like there's this powerful need to call versions of yourself back home. I'm feeling some of you could really be struggling with postpartum depression. Some of you could be struggling with romantic trauma, but this feels very sacral. It feels like this trauma, this heaviness is located the most in the sacral chakra we have the page of swords yeah like i'm almost seeing someone have a conversation with their past self the past version of them um yeah that like there needs to be some love some acceptance here we have the empress And the back of the deck energy here is justice. Mm -hmm. I feel that powerfully. For some of you, there is an anger that is within. Um, it feels like like the shadow or the sh the subconscious. Um, because this isn't an anger that you look at every day. This is something that is kind of festering and I really want to use the word festering because that's really the visually the, the visual that I'm getting it's festering in the subconscious and you may be trying to push it out the anger that you're feeling or the resentment that you're feeling but there's something in your life that you are working through emotionally that you're really needing to activate this soul retrieval and go back and get this past version of yourself like I'm envisioning this past version of yourself is kind of like in the fetal position in a corner going okay whatever you need me to do or whatever I have to do like really in survival mode right and I'm feeling like either someone put you there or you didn't realize how the choices you were making were going to impact you so this could be forgiveness of someone else this could be forgiveness of self um, when we talk about postpartum depression, there is a huge stigma attached to that because if we say we are suffering with postpartum depression to society and close-minded people, that sounds like we don't love our children or we don't love being a mother or being um, a caretaker or a nurturer, which society says women are, right? So there's this this 
closed offness about postpartum that just absolutely breaks my heart because so many women suffer from it because no matter how much someone tries to par- like prepare you for motherhood you never really know until you live it you you never understand the lack of sleep and the toll it takes on your body and your mind you never understand the feeling of going through pregnancy and having your body kind of hijacked and then afterwards you know getting spit up on having ketchup on your face and you know a toddler having your body hijacked more right especially if you're breastfeeding and things like that and all of this energy does not mean we don't love our children it doesn't and there are some people who don't suffer with postpartum and that's fine But there are quite a bit who do, and they find themselves in this very lonely place, not being able to acknowledge how they feel, because they feel if they acknowledge it, then they are, you know, um, saying that they don't love parenting or they don't love their children. Yeah. I know I went on a little bit of a rant. I'm picking up on, on a lot of energy here. But it's like using the rainwater to be able to almost guide you you know how if you were working through forgiveness you would have a pink rhodonite stone really helping you work through forgiveness it's kind of like that you know your ancestors are showing me a spell i'm watching them prepare it here i'm seeing a cauldron i'm seeing rainwater uh dried hibiscus dried clove um I'll walk you through this, actually, just in case this is a ritual that you want to do. And this ritual your ancestors showed me is really designed um, to help bring in the self-love, acceptance, and forgiveness that you need for this past version of yourself um, or for this other person who you feel um, has really done you wrong. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take a cauldron or a kitchen pot and put it over a candle fire or the stove. Um, if it's a kitchen pot, please only put it on the stove. <laughs> um, and then you're going to want to take rainwater that you've collected the same day. And you're going to want to start to to simmer that. Throw in some hibiscus. Throw in some clove. And you're going to stir that um, clockwise to bring this energy in for you. And the clove is representative of protection from the ego and the subconscious from sabotaging your healing. And the hibiscus is going to be that self-love, that self-acceptance, that um, self-forgiveness, okay? And you're gonna stir that clockwise. You're gonna let it simmer until the herbs are nice and soft. Or until you feel like that your spell is complete. And then you're gonna take a clean jar You're going to dump this liquid in. You can strain it if you'd like, or you can keep the herb in there. And you're going to close it. The next thing you're going to do is take an orange candle, and you're going to melt the orange candle over the top to represent that sacral chakra. You're going to want to carry that jar around with you for one month and keep it in your energy. And after that one month, you're going to dump it out in the earth, um, clean out your jar, and start your ritual all over again. Are you okay, Lakota? Oop, she's going to take a nap. <laughs> um, napping and resting could also be something that could really help you on rainy days. It just feels like you need time to sit down and process this heavy emotion. Like I'm seeing someone going through a healing ritual where there is a shaman um, working with their energy. But I feel like using this rainwater um, can can kind of be the same thing. Um, using this rainwater with the intention of cleansing your energetic field, cleansing your sacral chakra specifically. You'll even notice um, that the more you do this, the more your your lower back pain could let up, okay? But it's like you're you're suffering with this injustice. And whatever this injustice is, whether this injustice is, um, you know, uh, a romantic trauma, whether this injustice is feeling like being pushed into having kids, um, whether this injustice is feeling like um, you are upset with yourself for not being prepared, or whatever it is, 
for you, Pile 3. I feel like this rainwater and these rituals are really going to help cleanse that for you. And that is the intention that you should be setting when it rains. Okay? Using that rainwater to really help your, your energy flourish and thrive. All right, I'm going to leave that here. I wish you the best of luck on your journey. And until next time, bye.